is here to help you in giving Zamir to God. We invite you to bow your heads with us at this time. You may hear some noise on the outside. Those are our guests that are coming to join us. So we're going to pray at this time. And as Cedric and Kilia give both themselves and this, their son, Zamir, to God, I ask that you'll pray for this family that in their giving of themselves and their son, they'll be an example to God and to the world. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give to you this gift that you gave to these, your children. Little Zamir, we ask your Holy Spirit to rest on this child. Cover him, Lord, with your presence. Lead him in the paths of righteousness. And we pray, Lord, that he may become a giant of faith, one that will represent you before others. We pray, Lord, the same for him that Jesus experienced, for him to grow in wisdom and stature, in favor with God and man. We pray, Lord, when time on earth shall be no more, that this, your gift, may find a place in your kingdom. And I pray that through him you may lead mother and father even closer to you. Extend your blessing to this family, Lord. In copious measures is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Happy Sabbath, everyone. Let me invite you to take your hymnals in hand as we sing together. Our first hymn, hymn 183, I will sing of Jesus' love, sing of him who first loved me. Hymn 183. I will sing of Jesus' love, sing of him who first loved me for he left. Bright was above and down. I will sing of Jesus' love in his praise. I serve a risen Savior who is in the world today. In 251. I serve a risen Savior who is in the world today. I know that he is living whatever man may say. I see I hear his voice of cheer And just the time I need him Is always there I know he lives, he lives Christ Jesus lives today He walks with me and he talks with me A long life's narrow way He lives, he lives Salvation to My heart, and though my heart grows weary, I never will. I know that, I know that He is leading through all the stormy. The day of His appearing, the day of His appearing will come at the last. I know He lives, He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and He talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. 
Let's rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, O oh Christians. Lift up your voice and sing eternal hallelujah to Jesus Christ, our King, the hope of all who seek Him, the help of all who find. No, no, but it's the loving, the good and kind. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and he talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to And because we know that God lives in our heart, we have a hope in 440. How cheering is the Christian's hope while toiling here below in 440. How yourself a blessed Sabbath. We have members of the High Command of the Cadet Corps. We have the Honorable Mike Henry here with us. We want to extend a very cordial welcome to all of you. Let me recognize some of the folk who are visiting with us from the High Command of the Cadet. Major Paul Scott, Major O'Neill Lewin, Captain Julian Chambers, Lieutenant Clive Simpson, Lieutenant Althea Mac Murphy Bachelor, Second Lieutenant Samantha Hamilton, and visiting also we have commanding officers of the JCCF 
and representatives from the fire brigade, the police, Jamaica Defense Force. We are extremely happy to have you worshiping with us today. The cadets have joined us in their 75th anniversary celebration. I understand that We are very happy today that you chose to worship with us on the Sabbath day. And we trust that your worship will be spirit-filled and that you would be richly blessed. The cadets are very near and dear to us. As many of you know, we have our own uniformed troops here in the Seventh-day Adventist Church, our Pathfinders, and our master guides. And I believe the same kind of discipline that we try to inculcate in our young people, it is a similar work that the cadet does. I find that our young people who are so trained, they are very dignified, very polite, and they have life coping skills. So they are able to perform at a very high level. I have watched many official programs where dignitaries find it hard to stand up for a minute or two at attention when our national anthem is being played or sung. But I find that the youngsters who have been trained in the cadet or in the Pathfinder or Master Guide ministry, it is not a problem for them to stand at attention and to you know, show due respect to our national emblems. We are very happy to have you, and as I said before, I pray that your sojourn with us today will be meaningful and will be a blessing. I'm going to invite the Honorable Mike Henry at this time, if you would just greet the brethren, please. Thank you. Good morning church good morning again praise the Lord praise the Lord one more time praise the Lord one more time and let me hear a whole hallelujah I always wonder how you start and then you do all the introductions which takes up most of the time of your speaking reverend gentlemen citizens of the area and more importantly for today, members of the cadet units. It's my pleasure to be with you this morning, and I am here because I respect so much the issues that are dealt with through the cadet force. And as I speak to that, I speak to it against the background that I was a member of my cadet force at what is St. Jago High School. So I've come a long way, and I've brought with it, hopefully, some of the discipline some of the commitments, some of the commitments in terms of how you serve and the brotherhood of feeling. And that represents for me an area that we have neglected for too long. I have my own ideas of how that should be. I've long looked forward to cadet service and tied to the whole scouts movements, etc. But then I wondered where is the Garvey troop, where the nanny troop, where are the issues that we carry on our history and speak to the fact that we're here today on the backs of those who have achieved so much. And in today's world where we need a great deal of commitment in terms of discipline, in terms of responsibility, in terms of timing, and I find that continuously, it's through the cadet force, it's through that kind of commitment that we'll be able to transitionalize our communities to a better standing. So you young cadets that are here, you have a job to do, you have an example to set. And I went here to say to the cadet force, any help that I can give to expand, to build those out in the various colleges and schools that we have, that we can begin to build the respect and the love for each other and the areas of address of crime that we have to deal with, I'm here to do that with you. So here in the church, I welcome myself. It's like a home to me in many instances. And I'm not a stranger. In that context, 
I therefore come back to time. I hope I arrived about two minutes late. And if I have to leave you during the course of the day, it's because of all the functions and issues that I have to address. So when I steal away, it will be hopefully in the interest of the people, and maybe stealing away to God too, you never know. <laughs> but forgive me if I have to leave at any point in time because of the commitments. Let me congratulate the members of the cadet force, the leaders, the principals, those who are involved in building out. And as I said, I can single out Central, right? As being an example, and Maypen Primary, right? Have been examples of how we can build from the schools, build the area. And I will close by saying, I was fighting with my phone coming here. Because too often this phone, when it rings like it is now in my pocket, and I ask, who is it calling? They tell me it's the girl you just met down the road, or the boy who you met by the tank, because the identity of where you live, where you are, is of paramount importance, and the policies that you follow. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you for participating, and for participating in ensuring that we build out the cadet force and build out the strength of structure, of unity and commitment. Thank you very much and God bless you all and thank you for having me here this morning and I've explained my life and hopefully where we move from there. Thank you very much. Let us all stand. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it and his hands formed the dry land. O oh, come. Let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. The church is now called to worship. God and our Heavenly Father, we, Lord, are in your courts, and we continue to praise your name based on the experience we had with you this week. We ask, Lord, that as we lift your name on high, that you'll accept of our worship, that, Lord, you'll fill our hearts with blessings. And, Father, you'll draw us into a deeper and closer commitment with you, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. For those of you who have a written program in your hands, we will follow the program as is. So we will be taking the Commandant's 75th anniversary Founders Day message at this time to be presented by Lieutenant Colonel Rohan Robinson and um, where we have the presentation, the proclamation, we have the name of the Costas there. He will be represented by Justice of the Peace, Lilith Royal Wright. So we will follow the program as is. Thank you very much. So we now have the anniversary founder's message. Thank you. Good morning, church. Happy Sabbath. This is the day that the Lord has made. 
we will rejoice and be glad in it. The Commandant's message for the 75th anniversary of the founding of the Jamaica Combined Cadet Force. Officers, adult ranks, civilian employees, PSIs, cadets, and now church. It is with humility and satisfaction that I greet you on this our 75th anniversary. Over the 75 years, our force has been growing and embracing the aims and objectives laid out by our founding commandant in 1943. We have been able to accomplish thus far because the force over the years operated as a family with good moral values and attitude. Our force has been a shining example of a uniformed youth movement that continues to prepare our children to lead and to serve. Let us stop and reflect on the last 75 years and ask ourselves why the force is still a viable option to producing good citizens. It is because of all our adult volunteers who worked as a team giving fully of themselves at all times. To you who are presently serving and all those who have served, I pay tribute to you for service rendered and continues to render to the children of our nation. In reflecting, we must also ask the question, have we achieved all that we could have achieved? And have we grown to match the needs of our young people? Without trying to answer these questions, we have decided that the anniversary year should be a year of transformation for the force as the premier uniform youth movement in our country. We have identified nine main goals and have established our strategic development plan for the next three years. This will be our guide as we move into the next 25 years towards our centenary celebrations. I encourage all members of the force to use a standard family structure and relationship as a guide to the interactions with each other. Hence, as a family, we will build with our hearts putting our sweat into our efforts with solely one purpose, to fulfill our goals and objectives so that our country will always remain a place to live, work, and play in. As a family, we must take care of each other's well-being and make sure everything runs as planned. The transformation spoken of has seen the formation of additional battalions in the force. We have now established a battalion that technically is equivalent to having one battalion in each parish. The Clarendon Battalion comprises of the units Central High School, Clarendon College, Glenmuir High School, and the Ver Technical High Schools.
The 5th Battalion, which comprises the Clarendon Unit, was once composed of Manchester and Clarendon. We have now been separated. And so it gives the opportunity for all the schools in Clarendon and Manchester to become members of the Jamaica Combined Cadet Force. All the secondary schools. It is an opportunity that this transformation has given to all secondary schools in Jamaica. In continuing the Commandant's message, we now address our cadets. To our cadets, I say, Practice what you are learning at cadet training and be excellent ambassadors of your force, your school, and your country. You are our future and you will determine the effectiveness of the force in years to come. To our adult volunteers, to our civilian staff, and our PSIs, I wish to record my appreciation for the service of commitment you are giving to realizing our goals and objectives. Let us, as a family, take care of each other recognize our responsibilities to each other and our commitment to the JCCF and to Jamaica so that together we will make our dreams a reality and our future secure. Unte serviendo dosimos. the motto of the force, to unite, to serve, to lead. God bless the Jamaica Combined Cadet Force, and God bless Jamaica land we love. Colonel Errol V. Johnson, Commandant, Jamaica Combined Cadet Force. Thank you. If we're not ready with the presentation of the scroll, then I'll ask Justice of the Peace to read the um, message at this time. Thanks.
morning, church. Good morning. I stand here representing the Honorable William Shabu, who is unavoidably absent. In reading to you the proclamation from the Governor General, His Excellency, the Most Honorable Sir Patrick Linton Allen, member of the Order of the Nation, Knight Grand Cross of the Most Distinguished Order of St. Michael and St. George, Commander of the Order of Distinction, Knight of Grace of the Most Venerable Order of the Hospital of St. John of Jerusalem, Governor General of Jamaica. Whereas the Jamaica Combined Cadet Force, JCCF, having been established on the first day of November in the year 1943, in celebrating 75 years of its founding and service to Jamaica. And whereas the Jamaica Combined Cadet Force has recognized its vital role as an avenue for young persons of secondary school age to develop the spirit of citizenship, competence in leadership, and life skills to instill in our young people the idea of service to their fellow cadets, community, school, firm, and country. Whereas our nation is cognizant of the tremendous contribution the Jamaica Combined Cadet Force has made in the continued development of citizens who are ready to take their place in society and contribute positively to the development of our country. And whereas the Jamaica Combined Cadet Force must be recognized and supported as it holds a membership of over 3,000 young persons currently being trained in leadership, music, engineering, aeronautics, first aid, land and sea navigation in an effort to assist Jamaica to achieve her true potential to aid in development of this nation, Jamaica. Now, therefore, I, Patrick Linton Allen, member of the Order of the Nation, Knight Grand Cross of the Most Distinguished Order of St. Michael and St. George, Commander of the Order of Distinction, Knight of Cross of the Most Venerable Order of the Hospital of St. John of Jerusalem, Governor General of Jamaica, DO, hereby proclaim the first day of November 2018 to the 31st day of October 2019 as the Jamaica Combined Cadet Force 75th and urge all citizens of Jamaica to join with the Jamaica Combined Cadet Force in recognition of the vision and mission of their founding fathers for the contributions already made by them and the contribution which Jamaica will continue to benefit from in the future, given under my hand at King's House this first day of November. I thank you. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Good morning. Thank you very much, Reverend Grant, uh, pastor of the, this church, Honorable Mike Henry, and all other dignitaries. I uh, want to welcome you to this, the 
75th anniversary of the Jamaica Combined Cadet Force Proclamation. So we are celebrating one year of going around the island in every parish, all 14 parishes, explaining and recognizing the cadet force in each of those parishes. And so the scroll that was read moments ago by Lilith Royal Wink, JP, representing the Costas, Sorry, right. Thank you, right. Uh, it has been traveling right around the island. Last month in August, it was in Manchester. Today, it's right here in Clarendon, and it is moving from here to the parish of St. Catherine later this year. As a result of 75 years of celebration, the commandant instructed that a commemorative medal be designed to recognize all the members who have been serving as of November the 1st, uh, nine, last year, 2018. And so all persons in the cadet force will receive this medal. So this morning we have five officers who will be receiving, and we have one cadet who will be receiving from each school, representing all the cadets in that school. And so, again, I'm gonna ask Lilith Royal Wright to join me up here again as she hand out these medals. And the first medal recipient will be to Lieutenant Colonel Rowan Robinson. He is the commanding officer of the 5th Battalion, Jamaica Combined Cadet Force, and he's serving 36 years in the Cadet Force. Yes, you can give him a round of applause. That's a very long time. We have Major O'Neill Lewin, also is the second in command of the 5th Battalion, and he's doing a whopping 36 years as well, being a member of the Jamaica Combined Cadet Force. We also have Captain Julian Chambers, and uh, he's completing 16 years of services to the Jamaica Combined Cadet Force. We have Lieutenant Bachelor, the commanding officer for Clarendon College, and I think all of Maypen would have known Lieutenant Bachelor. She's completing six years, sorry, 16 years of service to the Jamaica <laughs> Combined Cadet Force. And last but not least, the adjutant for the 5th Battalion, Lieutenant Clive Simpson, is serving five years as a member of the Jamaica Combined Cadet Force. I just want to say it's five years as an officer, but he has done about seven years while being a student at Glenmuir High School. So probably we have more than five years. Give him a round of applause. And so we want to thank all these officers for their years of service to nation building and developing the youth of our nation. We also have some cadets from the various cadet units who will be representing all the cadets in that unit and they too will receive an award and all the cadet units will receive thereafter. So the units are Central High School, the representative from Central High School, uh, Glenmuir High School, the representative from Glenmuir High School, Veer Technical High School, 
the representative from Fair Technical High School, and uh, Clarendon College, the representative from Clarendon College, they may all come and collect their, their award representing the unit, the cadets in the unit. Okay, give them a round of applause. Come on, give them a round of applause. As the Honorable Mike Henry said, he was also a cadet, and it had taught him and it has resonated with him the, the, the discipline and commitment to service and nation building. Congregation, continue to remind, um, remember the Jamaica Combined Cadet for Senior Priors as we continue to strive for excellence and make the nation of Jamaica a better nation. Thank you very much. Good morning again, church. I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for graciously hosting us. And I must in particularly thank your pastor, Pastor Grant, as he was, when I, when I stepped inside there, half expectantly to see anybody in the middle of the week, Pastor Grant, I was directed by one of your members most graciously and directed me to Pastor Grant. And he, without any hesitation, he accepted to host us. And so I would like to extend our sincere gratitude to you, the members, and the clergy of the Sablamar Seventh-day Adventist Church. And, sorry, the Maypen. <laughs> please, please forgive me. I spent 21 years in Westmoreland. <laughs> and so, Westmoreland has a very special place in my heart as well. So, no, so let me say again, sincerest gratitude to the Maypen Seventh-day Adventist Church. And so I wish for you God's richest blessings and continue to spread the gospel in this our parish. Thank you. program there should be a musical item from the cadets if that is not forthcoming we will move on please stand for the opening hymn the 
opening hymn is hymn number four, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. Please remain standing. We're at a point in our service where we we pray. Where I'm given the privilege to intercede on the behalf of God's people. But I want to share something with you first. And I start by asking a question. Have you ever found yourself in a position where you are dying for a week to get behind you? To get it out of your life, so to speak? I had such a week. And maybe some of you did have such a week. But I share something with you from this week. On Monday, I got a call similar to a call I got maybe eight days before. One of my staff members called and said, sir, the bike rider is in an accident again. Eight days prior to that, he was hit from the bike. If it were not for his helmet, his head would have been busted on the asphalt. I quietly said, thank you, Jesus. He went to the hospital, he was treated and sent home. Bike was busted up. But as usual, I say to myself, you know something, the same God who gives will also give again. And so the bike was repaired. The rider was sent back on the bike to ride. Monday this week, I was called, sir, the bearer had an accident again. And I said, what is this, Lord? This time, he was coming around the corner. The rain was falling. Came around the corner too fast. Lost control. Fell from the bike. The bike went across the road. Hit a car. 
destroy the front end, destroy the bike, and he hit his head again. But he was saved by the helmet. When I looked at the repair cost for the car, I said, no, this is bad. When I look at the repair cost for the bike, I said, this is worse. But I said to myself, I put myself in the position of the taxi driver. Who is driving for somebody else? I said, if I call my insurance company, report the accident, and ask them to take care of it, because I am comprehensively insured to do that, it will take that driver weeks, Mr. Henry, for the vehicle to be repaired, for him to go back to making money for his employees. And I start thinking all kind of thing about his children where he has to take care of. And somebody said to me, but you're foolish. You don't do things like those. I said, but I can't help but thinking about another person. So I started spending. The car is such that you can't find parts easily. So I had to go to Mandeville to find parts. So I've been spending and I've been aching and at the same time, I say, you know, God, you have given me the resources to do this, and I thank you. But I became so distressed one of the time that I said, I just want this week to finish. I want it to be behind, to be behind me. I just want this Sabbath to come. Last evening, when I realized that the sun was setting, Brother Gordon, I said, thank you, Jesus. I know that some of you may feel the same way this week. That this week is a long week and you need it to go behind you. But we're at a place called a sanctuary. A place where God has called us to be. Where we can lift up holy hands and say, Jesus, thank you for taking us this far. So as we sing, O Thou Hearest. I'm not going to ask anybody to come to the altar. I'm just going to ask you to stay where you are. And for the first minute, just thank God for doing what he did for you this week. For the little situations that came by you where you thought that it is impossible for you to get out of it. But he has seen you through. Just thank him personally. Oh God, who hears it? First minute to just take your own time and thank God for who he is and what he has been doing for you. Father in heaven, great and awesome God, I bow before you, Lord, as a broken vessel, desiring to be healed and put back together for your service. You know my life more than I ever even will. But this one thing I know, that your promise never to leave or forsake me is true, because I have lived it. And so my 
experience with you and your love is personal. For you are a God who desires nothing more than to stick closer than a brother and remain as my savior. So Lord, you who have redeemed me, you who have given your life to save me, you who have decided that you will stand by me through thick or thin, this lump of clay today is saying, thank you, Lord. Father, as a church, we come now presenting our petitions to you. And we open our hearts, asking you, Lord, to just fill us with your Holy Spirit. We know, Lord, that there's nothing good within any one of us. And sometimes our imperfections are so great that we even ourselves wonder if you can ever even accept us. But you who have said that you will not cast any condemnation on us is also saying you have another second chance. Lord, today we come seeking victory over our bad habits and the sins that so easily besets us. We struggle every day with doing right when wrong seems the easiest thing to do. But we pray, Lord, that you awaken our consciences individually and collectively to know that there is no secret things that you will not see. And that although we may live public lives of loyalty, when the lights are off, we may be something else. And so we ask you, Lord, to forgive us of our sins. We ask you, Lord, to just guide our thoughts and let that thought be the one thing that will direct our actions. We ask you that we may do what is right in your sight, recognizing that it is you that we will answer to, because for everyone there is a day of judgment. Loving Father, today as we commemorate this 75th year of the cadet movement, we thank you for putting in such an institution that will help to guide the minds of our young people an institution which has instilled discipline and decency in many persons. An institution that has been here for a long time doing what it was mandated to do. And so Lord, today as we have a service that is representing and commemorating the efforts, may you continue to be with the leadership of the cadet corps. May you continue to guide them. May you continue to open their minds to understanding the true worth of what they are supposed to be doing. And may the young people who are a part of this group realize that they are part of something good and something noble and that their actions will speak very loudly so that the society will see that they have been transformed men and women of repute. Lord, we pray for the security forces of our island. Praying at a time when our country seems to be in turmoil, where persons are being killed every day, where our young people are being murdered mercilessly, where these same young persons are losing their direction and their purpose for life. When they think that the personal aggrandizement and the bling and the, 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 the quick money is the way to go. Where they don't realize 
that their life is precious as they were made in your image and that you're here on this earth for a purpose and a reason. Father, we pray that you be with the forces that they may know that they made a commitment to protect and serve the population of this country. So lead them, Lord, even as they go out in the streets, the byways and the lanes, protect them also because they too were created by your hands. We ask you, Lord, to be with the leadership of our country. Be with the leaders who have been tasked with the responsibility to make and put things in place, plans in place that will protect our people plans that will help us to advance as a nation, plans that should help to protect the young and the vulnerable of our society. May they recognize that without God, nothing they do will make any sense. So help them to know that with God in the vessel, they'll be able to smile at the storms of life. We pray, Lord, for this church, for the young people of this church, for the leaders of this church, that we too may just live a life of a good example, that those looking on will desire to know where this living comes from and desire to be a part of this great, this great church. Thank you, Lord, for taking us into your sanctuary today. And we pray, Lord, that none of us will leave here as we came. That as we come with our burdens, financially and otherwise, we recognize that we should leave them at your feet. For you, Lord, who owns the cattle and the thousand hills, has promised to provide for every one of us. Heavenly Father, for those who are ailing from all the illnesses and diseases of this world. Father in heaven, you are the great physician. It is you who can reach down and touch and heal the brokenness of the body, the mind, and the heart. And so we ask you, Lord, for a healing we ask you, Lord, for comfort for those who are hurting from the loss of loved ones. Where sometimes we don't understand why things happen, but just help us that when we cannot see your hand, we must trust your heart. O oh Lord, God of heaven, today we ask you to rest in our midst for a while. Be with us as we listen to the words from your manservant. Bless his mind, Lord, and let the words that come from his lips be your words and not his. Hide Pastor Howard Grant behind the cross of Calvary and let him be content in its shadows. Continue to be with us as a people and help us to continue to pray that you who promised to come will come and will not tarry. And until then, Lord, let hope burn alive in our hearts. As we look forward to a tomorrow, where well, you will be our God and we desire to be your people. Bless us today, Lord, we pray. Until you come, is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Please be seated.
May I invite the deacons to come forward for the collection of the offering. the tree is the Lord. It is holy to the Lord. Let us bow our heads for prayer. Gracious Lord, we thank you for the privilege of being in your courts once more. Thank you for providing us where we can return your portion and give our offering of gratitude. And now, Lord, we ask that as we give, we may give ourselves afresh to you, and that the offering that we have collected may go towards the furtherance of your cause. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The deacons will now wait on us for the offering. that there may be food in my house and prove me now in this says the Lord of hosts if I will not open for you the windows of heaven 
and pour out for you the, such blessings that there will not be room enough to receive them. seated. Thank you. <laughs> Greetings to the congregation. I invite you all to stand for the scripture reading. Today's scripture reading is taken from Exodus 17. We'll be reading from verse 8 through to 13. Here beginneth. Now Amalek came and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said to Joshua, Choose us some men and go out. Fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So, Moses did, so Joshua did as Moses said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And so it was when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hand became heavy. So they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. And Aaron and Hur supported his hands, one on one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until going down of the sun. Verse 13, verse 13, so Joshua defeated Amalek and his people with the edge of a sword. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. The Lord has a word for us today, and to bring that word is our senior pastor, Pastor Howard Grant. For those who don't know him, Pastor Grant came to this pastoral district just over, a little over a year now, but he has endeared himself to all of us. He's a very amiable person, warm-hearted, friendly person, youthful at heart, and it is just appropriate that he would address the cadets today because he is somebody whose ministry is very youth focused. In fact, he has served as youth director of Jamaica, Central Jamaica Conference of Seventh-day Adventists for a while. He has been in ministry, although he looks so young, he has been in ministry over 20 years. So he's a seasoned, experienced pastor. He loves sharing the word of God and I believe God has laid a special message on his heart today, which he will share with us just after the group Blessed brings us the song of meditation. I pray that you will be blessed by the word. Mic. 
Because you saw the need Because you gave so freely Because of Calvary We can now be called your own completed creations filled with you thank the trio for the reminder that we should be seekers of God's heart. Happy Sabbath to those who have joined us on our YouTube channel. We welcome you. We welcome the Combine Cadets. I want to say to you that if you want to see the service later on, you can uh, go to YouTube, type in Maypen Seventh Adventist Church, and you will see the replay of our service today, which is presently live. Just before we get into the message, I just want to share with the church two important things. We, all, we are all aware of the devastation that the hurricane did in the Bahamas. And as a church, we believe that we are our brother's keeper. I heard last evening Rondell Positive repeating a part of the pledge of the of Jamaica, the last line says, to advance the welfare of the whole human race. And uh, tonight they're having a concert, a benefit concert, and that is the theme under which they're having that concert. We believe that the residents of the Bahama Islands are our brothers and sisters. As a matter of fact, one of my sisters lived there, having married and moved, teaches in one of the schools there, uh, was not affected, but quite a few of her friends have been affected. The Seventh Adventist Church in Jamaica, through Jamaica Union Conference of Seventh Adventists, have been in touch with the residents of Bahamas, those who are members and those who are not. 
and we have an ongoing assistance that we are making and the president pastor everett brown has written to us inviting all the churches the month of september to collect a special offering that will be remitted to pastor peter carr and he was with us just a few weeks ago sitting right in the front seat here worshiping with us he served this church he is the president of the atlantic caribbean union which the bahamas is a part of we will remit that offering to them as in its fulsome to deal with the needs that these members and residents of the country of bahamas need or are facing we here at mipen will make that the collection of that offering next week sabbath next week sabbath we will make the collection of that offering we will remit it to the conference which will in turn remit it to the union and we will pass it on to the atlantic caribbean union for the assistance that's needed for the residents of the bahamas we need to keep on praying for them for those of us who are following the news the weather reports we understand that this weekend is going to be tough for them also because another uh, system has developed and it is heading towards them so let's keep that in mind next sabbath we will make that special collection second thing is the 13th of october the 13th of october that's the weekend before eros weekend the youth of the seventh Adventist church here at mapen will seek to host their youth evening of excellence and awards ceremony we are seeking to award uh, young people within and without the church and for more information please see our youth leader sister althea francis and there is a form for recommendation as it relates to the awards and no doubt that would have been sent to all relevant parties and personals so please keep that in mind the 13th of october is our youth evening of excellence awards ceremony we welcome those who are worshiping with us today the member of parliament for the area honorable mike henry and the officers and cadets of the fifth Batal battalion which includes uh, via technical uh, clarendon college central high and glenn muir it's good to see mrs bachelor uh, we served together uh, in the clarendon uh, chapterton area of clarendon and i know that this is her passion i want to share with you for a few minutes the story that is recorded by moses in the book of exodus chapter 17 verse 8 through 13. it's an unfamiliar passage one that is often overlooked and the character that we will speak of is not often mentioned in sermons as a matter of fact it is believed that this character's name is only mentioned twice in the bible but as i looked on the th the theme pass it on empowered equipped engaged i sought to find some unfamiliar bible character who i believe was empowered equipped equipped and engaged in the work 
of Christ. So Exodus chapter 17, verse 18, 8 through 13 is where we will go. Let us pray. God, our Heavenly Father, we open your words and we ask, dear Lord, that you'll speak with us now, we pray. Amen. The records state that the Amalekites came and attacked the Israelites at Repidim. Moses said to Joshua, Choose some of our men and go out to fight the Amalekites. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with staff, the staff of God in my hands. So Joshua fought the Amalekites as Moses had ordered. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went to the top of the hill. As long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. When Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone, placed it under him, and he sat on it. Aaron and her held his hands up, one on either side, so that his hands remained steady until sunset. So Joshua overcame the Amalekite army with the sword. Her empowered, equipped, engaged. Perhaps you have heard about the man who was out farming one afternoon. A pilot had been hired by Pepsi Cola to do some sky writing with his plane. All the letters had faded except for the P and the C. A farmer, the farmer was out plowing his field and looked up and saw the huge P and C in the clouds. He thought that this was a message from the Lord and that he had been called to preach Christ. He immediately left his plow, left the farm, went out and preached his very first sermon. As he was preaching, he told the story about the vision he saw in the clouds with those two letters that told him to go preach Christ. After the sermon, an old farmer who was less than impressed with a young man's speaking abilities walked up to him and said, Son, did you stop to think that the PC you saw in the clouds rather meant go plant corn? The Bible makes it clear that we all have different gifts. Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 through 6 says, Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who empowers them all in everyone. Some gifts are invisible or are not noticed by others but this does not mean one is more important than the next some need to be faithfully preaching Christ while others need to be faithfully planting corn not everyone can preach like the great preachers of the world not everyone can sing like the greatest singers of the world not everyone can reach large crowds like Billy Graham, but each of us have a job to do. And we must be content to serve God wherever God has called and equipped us to serve. The psalmist in Psalm 84 verse 10 says, and I quote, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God 
than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. In the church and in ministry as a whole, in the church and in life as a whole, there are many positions that may seem less important than others. As we look today, we will see what that really means. The selected text speaks to the journey of Israel to the promised land. The journey of Israel to the promised land was the fulfillment of God to the children of Israel who had been in slavery for over 400 years. They had many different and varying situations. And on this situation, in their journey, they were attacked by the Amalekites. Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said to Joshua, choose out men and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses said to him and fought with the Amalekites, Amalekites rather. And Moses, Aaron and her went up to the top of the hill. Moses prepares to respond to this unprovoked assault. And in these verses, we hear and we see some names that are familiar, uh, Brother Mike. When we see the name Moses, we see someone who is well known in Israel. We see someone who listened to God, uh, calling him out of bondage, calling him from shepherding to leading his people out. We see someone who was popular, or someone who was the leader. There was the warrior Joshua. Joshua was the young upcoming leader. And later on, we will see that as Moses died, Moses called Joshua and passed the mantle on to him. Joshua was the general of the army. Joshua was the one who was entrusted to defeat the enemies of God's people, to uh, pass through those who sought to stop God's people. Joshua was popular. We see a man by the name of Aaron. Aaron was the brother to Moses. When Moses decided that his speech was not straight enough, when Moses decided that Pharaoh would not listen to him because he stammered, because he stuttered, Aaron was his mouthpiece. It was Aaron and Moses who were responsible to have listened to God and told the Israelites that God had given them enough time, that it was time to leave bondage and enter the promised land. It was Aaron and Moses that led God's children out of captivity. By this time, Aaron was a high priest to the children of Israel. By this time, Aaron was God's representative to the children of Israel. We see Moses, the imminent leader. We see Joshua, the, the general, the warrior of the army. We see Aaron, all three popular men. Men that the Israelites knew were empowered. Men that the Israelites knew were equipped. Men that the Israelites knew were engaged to pass on that which God had given to them so that the Israelites could enter the promised land. But there's a name. There's a name that may cause some of us to scratch our heads and say, Audat. Who was this man? The Bible tells us that as Moses and Aaron ascended the hill, along with them went a man named Hur. We know very little about this man. Though his biography is not chronicled on the pages of the word of God, his story is no less important. In fact, we can learn a great deal about empowerment, about being equipped, 
about being engaged in the service that God has called us to do from this unknown man. During this battle, Moses had told his general Joshua that he would lift his hands up and his staff up from the top of that hill. While his hands were raised, Israel prevailed. While his hands fell down, Amalek gained the upper hand. After some time, Moses' hands became heavy. After some time, Moses' hand became weary. So much so that he could no longer hold them up. That is when Aaron, the popular high priest, and her, the unknown man, came beside Moses and held his hands up until the sun went down and victory was won. I'd like to examine this event a little closer. As I entitle the message, we need some men like her today. We need people in our country who are willing to stand and support others. We need people in our lives who are willing to perform those duties that have little to no recognition. We need some people who will continue to serve when there is no glory, when there is no attention, and seemingly no appreciation for their efforts. God sees all that we do in his name. And this man, her, shares with us four vital things that are needed if we're going to pass on the legacy. The legacy of empowerment, the legacy of being equipped, the legacy of engaging young men and young women in a service that takes them from the pit of uh, destruction in our country. The first thing, therefore, V's, the first thing about her that we should have is vigilance. The vi vigilance of people like her is needed today. Vigilance is watching for possible danger or difficulty. In Exodus chapter 17, verse 11, we recognize that her was vigilant. He was not just standing there watching Joshua and the soldiers fight the Amalekites. The Bible says, And it came to pass, when Moses held up his hand, that Israel prevailed, and when he let it down, Amalek prevailed. Her was not just present. Her was perceptive. As he stood there on that hill with Moses and Aaron, he was watching the battle below. He saw the great victory when Moses' hands were raised. He also noticed the defeat that came when Moses' hand fell. We need some vigilant cadets. We need some vigilant young men and young women in our country, in our world today. Men and women who will stand for right though the heavens are falling around them. Men and women who will recognize that these institutions are not just there for them alone, but is there to help them mold the lives of other young men and women. Her was vigilant. He recognized that if he was going to make it to the promised land, then victory was a must over the Amalekites. And so he saw what was happening. You see, we need to see what is happening around us. We can't live for ourselves alone. He wasn't living for himself alone. He recognized that this victory was dependent on Moses' hand being held up. We need people who are not just present for the moment but also perceptive of the moment. Not just present in our country, but perceptive of what is happening around us. The Amalekites attacked Israel without notice. 
their focus was also on the promised land. Uh, they didn't expect a war. Now all of a sudden they were fighting a war. We are currently focused on the spirit of revival and renewal. We need new things to be happening around us. We can rest assured that the enemy is planning an attack. Peter says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is as a roaring lion, walking about, seeking whom he may devour. We need some young men and women. We need leaders who are vigilant. If we're going to have empowered, equipped, engaged young people in our country, as leaders, we must be vigilant as to what is happening around us. We must be vigilant and we must act accordingly so that we don't only save ourselves but save others. Her was not just watching the war below. He was working. He was not just present. He was perceptive. He was participating. The time has come that all of us must participate in the betterment of each other's life. Her participated. All he was asked to do was to go up to the mountain with Moses. But while there, he saw the evil that was happening. He saw the defeat that was happening. And all he could do was become engaged. And his only engagement was holding the hand of the prophet. But when he held the hand of the prophet, Israel prevailed. In order for this country to grow, in order for us to achieve Vision 2020, we must be vigilant, we must be perceptive, and we must get engaged with what is happening, the positive that is happening around us. Her was vigilant. In order to pass it on, we must be vigilant. The second V is the virtue of her. Exodus 17, verse 12. But Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat thereon. And Aaron and her stood up, stayed up his hands, the one on one side, the other on the other side. And his hands were steady unto the sun went down. This vigilant man assessed the situation. He realized the cause of Israel's defeat. He saw that Moses was growing weary. Her didn't try to take over Moses' job. Her didn't push Moses out of the way. Her didn't collude with Aaron and said, you are the high priest. Take the staff. Don't you see his hand is getting tired? Her simply stood beside him and supported him. Her was a selfless servant of God. In order to be able to pass it on, we need men and women who are selfless, selfless servants of God. We need people who see the need and are willing to meet the need. We need people who see other servants of God who are growing and are willing to help bear the load. We are not looking for head hunters who desire to push people out of the way and take over the area of service. Rather, we need people who are willing to stand in the shadows and enable, enable others to continue their service to the Lord, to the country, and to their church. The fact is that we can't do everything, but we should do what we can do. Sometimes we get concerned about whether or not we could do a better job. 
and stop focusing on what we can do. Her wasn't concerned about if he could do a better job. He was probably younger than Moses. His hands would probably be able to stand out all the day. But he recognized that that wasn't what God had called him to do. You see, his position may not, might not have been prominent or visible to the people who were fighting the war. But that is what God called him to do. Nothing else could be more important. Her was not concerned about with popularity. He was focused on service. And that is what virtue speaks to. The country might not recognize the work that the cadet does with the boys and girls in the various battalions. But that is what we're called to do to affect and affect lives so that they can be change agents in the country in which they live, so that they can be change agents in the world in which they grow. Many might not recognize what you are doing as leaders of the Kellett, but God recognizes it, Colonel Rock Robinson. When you see a young man who is troubled and you invite that young man to become a part of the Kellett, and that young man learns some discipline, uh, that young woman learns some discipline and grows to become a change agent, not just only in her country, not just only in his country or community, but the world in which they live. He focused on service. We need to focus on service to others. To the least of these as we study as a church, we need to be focused on service to others. And service to others means to make the lives of our brothers and sisters better. You might not be recognized, but once you make someone's life better than it is, then you have the virtue of service. Someone's life who you touch will remember what you did for him or her and will want to do it for someone else later on. There must be virtue if we're going to pass it on. There must be vigilance if they're gonna pass, we're going to pass it on. The third thing is that there must be vitality. In Exodus chapter 17 Verse 12, the second half, the Bible says, Aaron and her stood, stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady unto the going down of the sun. We're going to be empowered, equipped, and engaged to pass it on. We can't only be present. We can't only be perceptive. We can't only be participating. But we also must be persistent. Moses was standing there interceding for the people of the Lord. Aaron was on one side. Her was on the other side. For a while they were just there, probably talking with Moses talking with him, encouraging him. Moses, you know you need to do this. Moses, look man, your hand has gone down. Lift back your hand up, man. Don't you see that we need to get into the promised land? They were there. They were looking. They were, uh, the ministry of presence was there. They did not allow Moses to go alone. For indeed, Moses probably, possibly had talked with God and God had related to him what he needed to do. To needed to do. And so they climbed that hill with Moses. When Moses got tired of standing, they found a stone and they placed him to sit on that stone. They were present. They were uh, perceptive. They were evaluating what was around them. They were participating with him. They got him the stone. They encouraged him. But then they did not say, man, a long time in the world. 30 years. Long time in this. Let me go on. 
No, they were persistent. They supported their leader until the sun went down and victory was won. What this country needs are folks who will support others consistently. We're not looking for people who will shoulder the load only when it is convenient for them. You know some people on the jump in when they see the cameraman come around? Uh, yeah, man. Uh, because they know that a video of them will be shown or a picture of them will be shown. They only uh, shoulder the load when it's convenient for them. We need people who will be steadfast and unmovable. We need people who will labor until the job is done. We need people who will fight until the battle is over. In 2 Timothy, we are told of Onesimus' unwavering support of Paul. Paul, the Bible tells us, was imprisoned in Rome. And Onesimus sought him out diligently. He looked for him until he found him. Once he found him, he ministered to his needs. That is what we need. That are the, those are the type of people that the world needs today. We need people who will stand for right with their leaders. You may not have a specific title. You may not receive any recognition, but you're valuable to those you serve. You're valuable to your community. You're valuable to your church. You're valuable to your country. This ministry of uh, taking young men and women and training them in discipline that is unlike no other is a ministry to Christ. It is changing the lives of those who possibly would end up somewhere else. It is probable that Moses, Joshua, and Aaron and the other warriors of Israel received credit for this victory. But this victory would not be possible except for a man named her. He was persistent. He exuded vitality. He knew what it meant to serve. Because in serving his brothers and sisters who came from him out of the land of Egypt would enter the promised land that God had promised them. As we seek to pass it on, as we seek to be empowered, to be equipped, to be engaged, we need to have vitality. We need to have virtue. We need to be vigilant. And we need to recognize our value. Verse 13 of Exodus chapter 17 the Bible says, and Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. Simply put, Joshua defeated Amalek and his people. On the surface, it may seem like her task, it may not seem like her task was that important. But if it had not been for him, Moses could not, would not have been able to carry out his duties. If only Aaron had been by his side, Aaron would have probably grown weary as well. If Moses' hands fell, Joshua would not have been able to lead. The army of Israel would not have been able to attain the victory. Had it not been for her, the battle would have been lost Israel would have been defeated. 
You see, there's no way to accurately measure the value of people like her. There's no way to accurately measure the value of people who are at the grassroots level working with those who need to have their lives impacted positively. Though no one else may have not noticed her actions that day, God did. Though no one notices your faithfulness today, Jesus does. One day, you might hear him say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. It will be worth it after all. You see, every deed done in the name of Jesus will be blessed and rewarded in eternity. Men may not recognize your effort, but rest assured that Jesus knows and he will reward your faithfulness. Or he will say, when I was in need, you were there to fulfill that need. What are you passing on? Empowerment, equipment, and engagement. But how do you pass that on? What are the tools that are needed to have you, us, empowered, equipped, engaged? I say the life and the service of her tells us that. We must be vig vigilant. We must see the danger and perceive what God desires us to do. We must be vig vigilant in order to pass on the service that we have been called to. We must be virtuous people. We must recognize that the simplest of tasks is great in the sight of God. That the task that we have been given is the only task that we can do at that time because that's the service that God has called us to do. We must recognize that others are set above us and we must not see that we can do a better job but rather that we can support the job that is doing we must be virtuous there must be a level of vitality we must be persistent we can't just be present we can't just be members of the jamaica combined cadet force we can't just be members of the pathfinder club we can't just be members of government we can't just be members of the center venice church we must be present we must have ministry of presence we must be there with each other we must be perceptive we must see that the devil is working hard to destroy not just the lives of those who are members of the cause of God but the lives of everyone else who are not called by the name of God we must be perceptive of the things the ills that affect the country that we live in not only must we be present and perceptive but we must participate in the positive things that can change the lives of those around us there are some of us we have and we have tasted of the, the positivity that the blessings of salvation brings and that is where we stop we dare not share it with others but God is saying that we must participate in the positive thinking in the positive choices in the positive decisions that needs to be made around us because positivity only brings positivity we must participate in the positive changes that people are want in their lives we must participate in the things that will cause men and women to see a difference that God makes we must participate in seeking to change the lives of those who need to be changed we must be persistent we can't get weary we mustn't get weary there's a song that we used to sing never get weary yet yes it may be because that you don't think you're recognized that you want to turn up your cups or you want to hang up your hats but we can't 
hang up. We can't turn down. We must be persistent because God has called us to pass it on. We must recognize that when others see your work as no value, God has valued you. After 75 years, how much longer? I say as long as it, this world lasts. We need to recognize that God has called us from the leader to the newest recruit to pass it on. Not only has he called us to pass it on, but he has empowered us, he has equipped us, and we are engaged in his service. Her only did what he was called to do at that time. He held the hands of Moses, or the hand of Moses, and Israel won the battle. Not everyone will become Lieutenant Colonel. Not everyone will be a major. Not everyone can stand and preach a sermon. Not everyone can be a, a pianist like Brother Brown. Not everyone can be a gifted vocalist like the trio that sang. Not everyone can march in the marching band and play the snare or the tenor or the bass drum or even the, the bugle. Not everyone can efficiently teach a class. Not everyone can do those jobs that are visible. But we all can do service to the cause of God. No matter who we are or what we do, we are valuable in the cause of God. No matter who you are or what you do, you are essential to the proper functioning of the body of Christ. And by the body of Christ, I mean the human beings that are around us that need, who needs to be served. God calls you to be like her. Holding up the prophet's hand until the victory is won. It's an ongoing victory. If we're going to pass on empowerment, engagement, and equipping, then we must stand in our places from the minutest to the greatest. If we're going to pass on the old matter of being empowered, equipped, and, and being engaged, then we must recognize that our service might not be valued by others, might not be seen by others, but it is seen by God. Because in the end, it is not what we do for and with these young people. It is what we do for and with God that matters. Pass it on. Be empowered. Be equipped. Be engaged. Be like her. You may not be noticed, but you will cause the victory to be won. Amen. Happy Sabbath, church. The closing hymn is hymn number 616, Soldiers of Christ Arise. When you have found it, please say amen. Please stand.
and put your armor on strong in the strength which God supplies through his eternal Son, strong in the Lord of hosts and in his mighty power. Who oh, in the strength of Jesus trust is more than conqueror. Stand then in his great might with all his strength endued. But take to arm you for the fight, the panoply of God that have things done and all your conflicts past. You may or come through Christ alone and stand and tower at last. From strength to strength go on, wrestle and fight and pray. Tread all the paws of darkness down and win the well-fought day. Still let the Spirit cry in all his soldiers come Till Christ the Lord who reigns on I Shall take the conquerors home Please remain standing for the benediction Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. Dismiss us, Lord, with blessings we pray, as from thy worship we go our ways. It's gone, flakes all through the day, saved in thy kingdom, thy will I pray. Amen. Just a reminder, we see you later this evening at 4 o'clock for our, 3.30 rather, for our communion service. Later this evening at 3.30, we will be back for our communion service. Thank you very much. Please be seated to be ushered out.